Welcome to today's 3D print. Today, Tron XYX1. No one sent me this. I bought this from Gearbest. It was on sale for like 112 bucks. So I was like, might as well get it and try it. And Maker's Muse liked it, so I'm going to try to build it. Oh, this is a kit in the truest sense of the word. It is actually a box full of parts. And I have to actually assemble them. So I've loaded up the PDF instruction manual on here, which actually looks pretty good. So hopefully I won't have any trouble assembling this. First step was to attach um, our extruded rail to the base of the printer, which I've done here using three 8mm screws and the hammer nuts. And I will now go on to step two, which is going to be attaching the secondary rail. Alrighty, the base is getting built. The extrusions are attached, reinforcement brackets and braces are all installed. It's looking pretty good. Not bad. So now we were going to continue. Alright, next step. The bracket, limit switch, and Y-axis stepper motor are installed. Do be careful, this uses 3mm screws, which are in the other bag with all of the bed springs, not 4mm screws. Bed installed, belt attached, stepper motor adjusted. Chunk is assembled. This is your vertical carriage and X arm. So your three bearings, which will slide over the 2040 rail. And this will be your feeder extruder motor, and this will be your x-axis stepper motor attachment. So, not bad. Alrighty, the idler for the x is installed. The x carriage is in place, since you have to put it on before you put that on. Limit switch is attached for the x-axis, so that's what the arm should hit. But it's hitting something else first. Ah, it's hitting the frame. Okay. So I got to slide this arm over a little bit. No big deal. But we will go on to the next step, most likely to install the extruder motor. Alrighty. Z motor is installed with the threaded rod Z lead screw. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's much smaller than a normal lead screw. And the brass collar in here. So now we have a functioning Z axis, a functioning X axis, very tight functioning X axis, and a functioning y-axis so we shall see Z end stop installed right there and the bed installed with the springs and the wing nuts and removable fiberglass build plate installed so I believe physical construction is almost done now we build the control box the breakout box for the brain board and wire everything up well there we go finished assembling the little box which everything plugs into I forgot to record a little clip of the inside of that, but it's just one of those long, skinny, melzy boards, and you plug everything into it, and it's done. It prints okay. I do have an issue. Um, this is too tight. I mean, way too tight, to the point where it's overheating the stepper driver, but I can't loosen it. There's no means with which to loosen that, because they're not adjustable, and this is wobbling like crazy. So let me show you this. It's slightly out of the camera view for you guys. Oop, I guess it would help if I got that out of there. But this wobbles all over the place. And that's after I wrapped a whole bunch of tape around these two wheels to tighten it up. Um, so that obviously gives you pretty messed up print results there. Because this is moving all over the place. Um... And they're not eccentric, so you can't adjust them. So i got to figure out how to fix that. Probably drill this hole out and move this wheel in, make it eccentric, basically make it adjustable. And um, push it in to make it work. But beyond that, the bed is okay. Um, it's a little tighter than I would like, but it's not bad. But this is too tight, so i got to loosen that up. But not bad. The The fiberglass works pretty good. I was, I'm surprised. I don't have to put any glue on it or anything. I can print directly on it, and the part just comes right off. I'm really surprised by that. Um, the machine looks nice. It did a decent job. I did a little basic wire management. I have these all wired up, pinned up into looms, so that um keep it reasonably neat. <coughs> I'll put the wrapping on there later. They have this wrapping that they include to wrap around the wires, but I haven't gotten to that stage yet. 
I don't like that you can't turn it off. The only way to turn it off is to unplug it, but that keeps the power supply going. So I unplug it back here. But not a bad little machine for $110. Uh, hopefully I can get some of the quality that Angus was getting out of his. He said he was printing really nice prints with his. But I think once I tighten this up, I'll be okay. And I'll get some good prints out of it. And I will talk to you guys about it later. You have a great night.